so we're calling this deal uh, this is Tom and uh, Alice you guys saw their picture beginning of this uh, short little video uh, this is their two for one deal so this is kind of the house that's at the front of the lot. So, um, hi guys, uh, we are with uh, Tom and Ellis Jenkins and we happen to be in just over kind of the Illinois border in, um, in Indiana. And we wanted to kind of, I wanted to come here and make a uh, short video of one of their properties, but more importantly, kind of what they're doing with real estate. So we'll kind of start from there and I think it sh this should be a inspirational as well as an educational thing uh, in terms of what they're doing with their own real estate. So guys, uh, welcome. Thank, uh, you. Uh, Thank you. So the reason I wanted to have you guys was that we want to talk about different people, different walks of life and why we do what we do. So I guess we'll just start from the very beginning is why are you guys investing in real estate? We're investing in it because we feel like it's the way to fix the retirement problem okay so what was the retirement problem the retirement problem was that there wasn't any okay both of you guys um, have good jobs she had she has more of one than I do okay uh, in my career field in healthcare you rarely stay long enough to accumulate that that's just a sad fact that uh, we've lived in nine different states and I've had probably that many employers and you know it takes four or five years to build up the, uh, your uh, eligibility etc so it just never fell together so okay. we we began to look several years ago for the thing that would help us do that and not have to rely on the employer plan or to rely necessarily on social security okay so real estate uh, fit that model okay got it so, so about um 2013 was, or 2014, 2014 actually was the spring, we, we took a course. We, we took a course with a, um, a different uh, group that uh, was relatively expensive. We got a lot of knowledge, but we didn't get much practical hands on. And so we began our adventure with, with a lot of education but no, no resources, no local resources, no, no help, no uh, feet on the ground, if you will. And we began our process of feeling our way around. And wholesaling was the, was the exit strategy that we chose because we felt like financially that was probably the easiest way for us to get into it. So it's like a lot of other people, right? A lot of information um, kind of all over the place. Right. And then it's like, well, you could do wholesales. Right. right? Um, so, and uh, what Tom said, it's kind of interesting because a lot of times uh, we see this happen all the time. People will come to real estate for a specific purpose and the goal is I'm going to go down to Houston, Texas. Yet we get on the road and there's no specific roadmap right. as to which turns to take. So you're like, well, you know, as long as I'm heading south, I think somehow I'm going to get down there. Right. Right. And you're not you have no idea, right? And people will do wholesales, they'll do flips, they'll do, and then every month you hear somebody new talk about something new, and you're like, oh my God, that sounds so exciting. Yeah. Because it's fresh in your mind, and you make a joke. But you guys have stuck to wholesaling for the last two, three years, yes. correct? That's yes. correct. Okay. We, yeah. So what were the kind of the results in terms of, uh, why did you come to Chicago Ria, right? And then say, okay, wait a minute. We already are doing something that's working, mm -hmm. right? In, because in most circles, you guys would be considered successful, mm -hmm. right? In real estate, because you have managed to successfully wholesale deals. Mm -hmm. And it's a, something that I think should be appreciated, congratulated, mm -hmm. because 99% person, person of people just bomb. That's just mm -hmm. the reality of life. Mm -hmm. But you guys, but why did you start kind of change your mindset and start thinking the way we do? What is the reason for that? And we happen to be the reason we're here, kind of in a darkish, older looking house, <laughs> is because we happen smoke to be a small right. filled room because we happen to be at one of your properties. Right, right? exactly. And Which we would have wholesale by now. Right. <laughs> so, what was the reason? What was happening with the wholesale strategy versus, and then I'm going to kind of talk about today? Well, the uh, the wholesale, as you've said, is, is one bite and you're done. You know, it's. Uh, um, there's nothing much after that and granted we're working full-time and it fit that situation because so we you were working full-time both of us and then on top of that you were doing wholesale that's correct. okay that's correct. about how many wholesales have you guys done 
last year we really began to get traction I'd say in um, uh, late 2016 early 2017 last okay. year we finished with I think eight transactions eight deals eight that's great yeah. that's great okay and um, on an average what were you making per deal anywhere from uh, I'd say 1500 to, to uh, the, the largest was 12 five fifteen hundred dollars yeah well, it was we passed it on to someone else pretty quickly, a, and we did yeah. the deal with with the end buyer. Okay, got yeah. it. And so we we were basically the easier, buyer bait. So fifteen hundred to about twelve thousand. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. right. so yes. six seven thousand would be yes about right. average. Right. Right. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. So now there's a lot of people that get stuck in that rut, and there's nothing wrong with it. You're making money, obviously, right? It's it's great, uh, but why? start looking at the way we think about things right we think about things in building wealth which is two years five houses get them paid off in seven or two years ten houses get them all paid off in seven or 20 or 30 mm -hmm. right? right instead of wholesale properties that you don't want keep everything else right, right. if you have to do a flip once in a while do a flip right. but wholesale stuff that you do not want but never give up something that is pure gold because that's for you to keep. That's the ph basic philosophy we've built our businesses on, right? So why, what was the change in mindset? Was it the three day, was it mastery, yeah. what was it? Yeah, the, um, we began to visit your programs all, oh, what, a year and a half? To go, so you started coming well, to Chicago. Yeah, yeah. we went to Tilly Park was close, and, and Chicago uh, yeah, yeah, we was right. really. And it was it was during that piece that we that we began to see. Now there, there's more to this. We've had you know thousands of dollars of expense learning to do this, and yet instinctively we knew that this is not all there is. I mean, there, there's more to this than just kiss and make up. You know, there got to be something else. So <laughs> we said. This and sounds the three like, day was coming and up. And the three day was coming up. We said, you know, piece of cake. We're going to go do that. And that's when that's when the light bulb went off for us that said, okay, now we have. It's like the Bible says, you look through a glass darkly and then face to face. We've been looking through the glass of wholesaling very darkly. Yeah. We said, no, no, no. This is this is okay. I I now know after your three day. And, and then the mastery program was really the one that put it over the edge because by the time we finished that, we had every tool uh, that we needed to walk into a place like this and say, yeah, yeah, you could wholesale it real quick probably. And then let's look further and say, well, what's it take to, to make it better? And, and then it's a matter of good, better, best, which right. is a philosophy that I've had in my workplace as an administrator for decades, telling the staff, don't just settle for what's good, settle for what you can improve. And with the tools that we got into mastery, it was now, now I got it. Now, you know, it's so. kind of interesting because you could have wholesale that made five, six, seven thousand bucks, eight thousand yeah. bucks, right? right? And now, piece of cake, right? That you could have done all day long. Oh, I look back on the ones we gave away. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, I wish we still had. Well, we look at it through that lens because right. we realize, dang, we could have, right. we could have fixed that. We could have gotten other folks involved. Fixed it up and sold it for a much larger much profit larger than four thousand dollars. But, right. but we didn't know how to put the pieces together. Didn't know how to do it. We didn't know the how to find the finances. Weren't there, and, um, and we we ourselves didn't know how to. We were not hammer and nail kind of people, so we didn't. We just didn't have all the pieces to put together. So let's take the last couple of deals you have done. Instead of wholesaling it after mastery, mm -hmm. we're like you keep the best ones, mm -hmm. the ones that cash flow the most, mm -hmm. the ones that are the solid areas, right? Mm -hmm. You keep the, well, because what you probably realize by now is you could do one wholesale make five or six thousand bucks or you could keep that property same thing for a year mm -hmm. and it'll make five or six thousand five or six thousand five or six thousand for the rest of your life mm -hmm. and give it to your kids or grandkids yeah. and they keep making money right and the it becomes your property a golden goose forever right, right? um so the first property let's talk about it as, as an example uh what was the what were the numbers like that was the one we just finished here in Hammond. Right. Uh, we closed on it uh, December 21st. Okay. Picked it up for 45000 It was a three bedroom, one bath with a full basement. Mm -hmm. um, and a garage. And a garage, and a separate garage. 
and it needed this kind of work. It's, okay. it's a replica of, of this one almost. Just clean up, paint, updating, touch yeah, up, paint, up, take out carpet, right half of set of hardwood floors. floors right? underneath so there. the bowls updated are great. Updated the kitchen and, updated and the, the bathroom. Kitchen. We used every tool in the in the mastery trade book right. in terms of uh, excuse me vendor supplies and etc. Um, we put we bought it for forty five. We put um, twenty two in it. We had budgeted twenty, but at the tail end we realized there was some there was still some stuff we needed. The garage, for example, was shoddy, and I thought, okay, yeah, you could do that, and yet what what is going to be our our corporate mark? What is Good Property Solutions? footprint going to look like going anywhere. And so your said, company is called Good Property Solutions. That's sure. correct. Good so do you basically have a standard you want to live by. Yes. We have a standard. Right. It, it could be debated by others and that's fine, but right. we decided the garage was sick looking and we wanted to fix it. So we redid the garage, resided. Well, the inside looks so great and it didn't yeah. change the fact that we could rent it. I mean, right. that from that philosophy, it was rented, but uh -huh. it it, you wanted to have a nice We wanted property. it to look we wanted nice, we wanted it to nice. appraise well, and we didn't want to come back and have to fix it later. Right. So we went nice. ahead into the garage, yeah. and we went ahead and we're painting the outside. Okay, so yeah. what was that property bought for? 45. 45,000, 45, how much fix up? 22. 22 fix up. You were with, within your numbers? Yes. Yeah. You were within your numbers. So basically that all in cost was 60, 65,000, yeah. right? 67,000. So. Uh, what, what is that property worth? Uh, we had a CMA done by our broker uh, uh, mid-January. It came out at 120 on that property. Plus 120. 120. 120. Yeah. You do realize, it, I mean, I hate to say this, right? Yeah. But it's the truth. It added for most people a good chunk of their paycheck in equity in one transaction that you would have given away. If we had just wholesale it. Yeah, if you had just wholesale yeah, it. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, by it's, then we knew it. Yeah, yeah by yeah. then. By, no, but it's, it's, we never, you know, it's interesting how the right properties bought, bought correctly, and everybody's telling us it's a hot market, we can't find properties. We can't. And it's like, guys, if you look, there are properties. Oh, yeah. Right? And you're finding them, we're finding them every day. Right? So I want to, so that property, how much will it cash flow? The rent is uh, eleven fifty. Um, after the mortgage, etc., it's about four hundred to four fifty cash flow. Cash cash flow. Net cash, cash flow. Cash flow. Okay. So plus you have equity, fifty thousand, forty fifty thousand equity, obviously mm -hmm. on top of that. Mm -hmm. How much will this property cash flow? This um, this is unusual. It has another property in the back to So there's two properties. Well, I, I can separate. Yeah. This one is a nine fifty monthly rental, and the back one is uh, six fifty. Although I think we'll be able to I think once we're done, so this will be more. How much will these cash flow together? Uh, Sixteen hundred minus the mortgage. I think it was about seven or eight hundred. Seven or eight hundred. Yeah. yeah. So if we take these two properties between the two, that's about close to about a thousand bucks a month. Easy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you add the ones you wholesale before we met, mm -hmm. right? Hmm. I mean, you could have four or five thousand dollars coming in, no sure. problem. Yeah. For sure. Right. But. What, what's exciting to see is this, in the last two, three months, what you guys have accomplished, mm -hmm. right? Another six or eight of these, it will match most, for two couples who have worked, their social security income, no issue, oh, gotcha. right? If not more, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's there, and you own the properties, and the properties are paying themselves down. Right. So, uh, yeah. here's, and, and I wanted to kind of bring this up, and it's a touchy subject, but I will bring this up. Sorry. It's an age issue, <laughs> is what I really want to talk about. No, but, I mean, a lot of times people are like, man, at this point, you're going to senior citizens, right? And uh, it's typically, I mean, now we have a lot of people, Miss Christine's the world, sure. uh, Miss Mary, a lot, lot of people who, are, uh, who have seen life, you know, uh, and that's how I'll put it, who have seen life maybe more than I have, <laughs> right? And the whole thing is, well, it's kind of time to wrap it up. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. We're going to just manage within what we got, and that's how it is. Oh, yeah. Yet, <laughs> you guys have, I know you guys have always had good attitude, right? Initially, I know you guys were a bit skeptical that, oh my God, these numbers are real, <laughs> until you had a complete turnaround, right? right? But why? How do you guys manage that? Rather than just saying, well, this is just how life is, and this is all I'm going to ever make. We've never been that way. We've, we met working that's together. That's never been our favorite, no. Age, age is relevant. My father uh, 
worked until he was 85 doing fundraising for, for uh, hospitals and colleges and universities. He died three years later. But he was never happier than when he was working. Look, I, I used to get out and I said, Dad, you cannot mean that. Yeah. I mean, you just can't get up yeah. and say, I can't wait to get to work. He says, yeah, I do. I really do. Don't you? I said, no, I don't. Not really. <laughs> said, you know, I'm depressed. I hate to go to work. Because what I'm doing is boring. It's meaningless. It doesn't really help people. And that's the other piece that we found, which keeps stoking our furnace, is that by doing this, we're helping people. We're helping the seller here because he was diagnosed with a, a fatal medical condition about six, eight months ago. He needs to get rid of his properties. We're helping the tenant who moves in here because she's going to have a great place to live at a reasonable price. And we're going to improve the neighborhood. We're getting this property back on the market for the mayor of Hammond so he can be happy about having investors who really do things, you know, right. for the city of Hammond. Good. So that's uh, that to me is age uh, age irrelevant. It's a philosophy that you either have or you don't have, or you somehow wind up trying to get somewhere along the way. So for us, it was easy to see this as the as the uh, the, the, the very obvious logical way to keep going. See, but the thing is, when people like you talk, it's like it just seems obvious. It's like, listen, we're all probably we no, nobody knows when the expiration date is. Right. Okay. So the b philosophy, at least I have, is might as well live it up by that time, sure. right? And the yeah. more, that doesn't mean it's all work, no play. But, you know, the old adage is you got to work your butt off and have fun as we, uh, you know, as we go. So let me get this phone turned off. Uh, as we go, right? But, and which is kind of really good to see. But, Ms. Ellis, I mean, a lot of people nowadays, right, when we have had you speak at City of the Chicago Ria mm -hmm. uh, or at Mastery, it's inspiring for people. Like, oh my God, man, look at Tom and that. No, I mean, truly, because, they see wow. uh, themselves in you, oh. right? And, and they're like, oh my God, right? If they can do this, it gives me hope, right? I mean, it's just, it's, it's something that is, because it's so real, right? Um, I guess, so for you, where are you? Because you're doing a lot of marketing on the right. front end, right. right? And then who goes and talks to the seller? I typically do. You typically do, right? And if if he's available, Tom will, will go. But I have. So you have a more flexible schedule than yeah. Tom. Yeah, right. okay. that is and, fixed. Right. Yeah. Okay. So so I I typically I mean that's that's my role in in my working world is is marketing, public relations, advertising, that sort of thing. So it's okay. just so it's it's. It's just easy for me to, to do that. And you guys don't do very fancy marketing. I mean, let's no, just be, I mean, this is don't. nothing. We do, we do some mailing, no, we do some bandit signs. Hunting. No. I yeah. mean, just basic mailings, basic bandit right. signs, right. but right. you're consistent. We're, we're consistent with it, and we're, we do a tremendous amount of networking. Tremendous. I mean, okay. that's how we found this house is where we found two others. And then, you know, we're we're getting some word of mouth, okay. uh, referrals, that kind of thing. So, okay, got it. So, we're we're getting known in the community. Okay, got it. We're and also getting referrals from buyers that there are some um, yeah, properties that they can't find the <laughs> the uh, the people they they vanished, and so we do the research. We'll do the skip tracing, and we'll find them. And then those are the kind of properties where we would share with that with that buyer. So so we get all referrals from all all types of. Of ways. Guy called us uh, on the way home from the meeting. I said he saw the sign on our car. And he called. Hey, yeah. I've got a I've got a fourplex. Um, we're divorcing. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting crazy. because most people think, right? You have to do very fancy things, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I respected you guys once I found out you guys were doing, you know, wholesales. You guys were actually doing the front end, and I'm like, guys, why eat like you know, kind of a bite of the steak if you can own the steak? Right? I mean, just, and I think, so let's talk because that's the other piece. People are like, well, then you don't understand. Uh, where do I get the money? Mm -hmm. Right? right. Um, I mean, so this is the other difficult question, right? At this point in your life, <laughs> right, as you get more gray hair, you're supposed to have all the money squared away, everything squared away. Mm -hmm. Now, you guys had a little bit squ oh, sure. squared away, yeah. but the reason you're doing real estate is because you're like, no, we really want to secure our future. Mm -hmm. Right? And it's that catch-22 that we have this much, we want to grow it to this much, mm -hmm. how do we get there? Mm -hmm. Right? And so in Mastery, we said there's so many people right here that will give you loans. Right? And now you found out that even friends, people who are fr you were friends with, <laughs> are suddenly willing to do partnerships with you. They're right. willing to do deals. Right. right? So was that a lack of confidence or you guys just didn't know 
when you uh, before you started mastering that you could actually do these properties you just needed to know how to borrow the money on the front end and pay it back we were aware we were aware that people would certainly loan money and, and um, create more wealth in terms that they would they would be um, they would be able to get interest you know 10 right. 12 whatever percent we were aware of that but mm -hmm. we couldn't believe that how that, simple it would be well and that someone would trust that we could do the property right. that we had the ability that they would that we were first timers and that they would would loan their hard-earned money to us and and trust that we would be able to to execute the the project and after we attended um, mastery we knew that we did have that ability and and that there began were people to feel and that was the reality confident. we had read about it for years oh you can borrow money and i was like whoa <laughs> nobody's gonna do that you know to me there, no uh -uh, it won't work and then bingo there it is right and you know the, the interesting part the funny part is right like yesterday yesterday we just had an extra meeting uh, for mastery, mm -hmm. there's 30, 40 people in the class, right? Uh, that easily can lend another two, three, four hundred thousand bucks each, sure. right? Mm -hmm. And and the exciting thing is that they're excited about lending because they make a nice return, right? And mm -hmm. they want to do two, three, four deals once they've done one with you. Why? Because then it's great, you know. They refinance one, they pay me with the money back. I do it over again and over again and over again. And on top of that, they can do investing. Mm -hmm. And the fun part is that. Uh, a lot of people who have money to lend, right? They can look at your properties and learn, right? It's, so it's a both, it goes both ways. Mm -hmm. So I guess my thing as we wrap this up, right, is what about that person who says, well, you know, it works for Andrew, it works for Rahul, it works for Mary, it works for three, four, five, hundred, eight hundred other people. Mm -hmm. And now it suddenly works for these two people, right? Uh, for Tom and Ellis. What about me? What do you say to that person? Does it require work? Does it require effort? Mm -hmm. And what do you say to that person that is their hope, I guess? Well, I, uh, I would ask them, you know, uh, okay, having said what you just said, it'll work for you, but you, you obviously have doubt about it working. Right. Period. And then well, how do we overcome your doubt? Well, you're going to have to be the driver of how you overcome your own doubt. You know, I can talk to you all day and Alice can talk to you and we can show you. But until you flip the switch between your ears that says, I'm going to try this and I know I have help doing it, then you're right, it won't work. It, it, uh, Henry Ford, it was it Henry Ford or, or uh, yeah, Henry Ford once said, the man who says he can't and the man who says he can are both right. Where, where do you want to be? It's about half full, it's half empty, all sorts of analogies. For us, it was a matter of it, it went off because it did trigger between the years. We could see the mechanics of what your program does for people. All you have to say is, sign me up, coach, I'm ready to go. And you will take them there. Now, if they don't want to get that, then that's their problem. But if you do everything You've like you have, them, have pointed out uh, and in, in the mastery program, right. and that's what we did. We decided that we were dumb enough to be rich. Mm -hmm. There's a guy who wrote a book, Bill Barnett, um, Bill Barnett yeah, are you dumb enough to be rich? And so we looked at each other and said, we are finally dumb enough to be rich. You know, we are going to follow <laughs> well, what he says. So, well, what is interesting <laughs> is this, right? It's, and we have found this regardless of age, yeah. regardless of, I think it's a person thing, yeah. right? That in life, it's good to be, uh, one person is, you know, a skeptic. Mm -hmm. One person, it doesn't matter what you show them, empirical proof, yeah. they're never going to, their just attitude is that, you know, um, the glass is half empty. That's just right. their attitude. Exactly. It's just like, oh my God, there's a well in the grass, I'm gonna have this nice drink and go fill it up again. You know, and basically be able to feed the whole village type of thing, that mentality. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think, and the other part of it is a lot of times what happens is we've all had experiences where we, our hopes went up, were up yeah. and then they were crushed. Mm -hmm. Maybe we didn't execute, maybe it wasn't the right help, but mm -hmm. people who are resilient have, they realize we have no other choice sure. for all of us. We have to keep coming back and keep coming back and keep coming back. But I think if there's empirical proof that this works, I mean, in the Chicagoland area, uh, especially master, the success rate is like so high, right? I mean, we're 85, 88% success rate. Uh, what, in, 
about 320, 330 people at this point with 3,000 plus houses in three and a half years, right? So it's like there's no more you can show. But at some point, I think it's an attitude type of issue, which you guys have clearly demonstrated, right? Yeah, we are thrilled. So, I mean, we couldn't be uh, happier with, with the success. The, the tools that we have now, uh, if I were a bow and arrow hunter, I would feel confident knowing I have every arrow in my quiver that I need to take on any animal out here. Right. Prior to that process, we did not. We only had one arrow. Right. And that was the wholesale arrow. Yeah, and that's it. And that's it. That's all we had. We figured that one out. And we figured that out. <laughs> and uh, we still do it, you know. But um, the, the beauty of this thing is that you can do it and you can work full time. Those who think you can't do it and work full time um, need to smarten up because you right. can do it full time. Right. We're living examples of that now. Uh, and the real, the real question is do you want to do, do you it? Want that's it. Yeah. No, but it, see, here's the fun. What is exciting is this. Literally, if for the next couple of years, literally two, two and a half years, mm -hmm. if you guys just keep this pace, right. you know, two at a time, two at a time, two at a time, at 10 or 12 properties, 15 properties, you will have enough income, right, that even if something happens, I mean, as you get older, at some point something's going to happen to somebody. This is how it is, right? Mm -hmm. Still, you literally can go to the good Lord knowing that the, your other spouse is taken care of. And once something happens to them, you know you've contributed a good amount to your kids or your grandkids, whatever the case may be, uh, to their, uh, and left a legacy, right? And that's- Legacy an, like is have, so important. We had looked for like that, that for years with other businesses and other, and it just never fell together. It just was not there. We didn't, it didn't line up. It didn't make sense. It wasn't translatable until right. now. Right. And no, I mean, it's, it's kind of uh, interesting. We laugh about mm -hmm. this. I'm like, guys, think about this, right? What if we met in 2012? Oh. <laughs> I mean, it's a sick thought, right? It's a, yeah. it, it, that I, you'd have numbers like the Reggies and the Rahuls, the yeah. words of 50, 60, 70, 80. I mean, literally, yeah. right? Uh, I mean, you'd literally be playing Monopoly with these houses. So, but anyways, I wanted to kind of come and record. Uh, I think this will be inspirational and it'll put a different uh, twist that you can do, have a full-time job, do two or three, yeah. two or three, two or three houses at a time, and literally in a two-year period, build phenomenal wealth. Well, that, the goal is to replace the income. Right. And, and as your model says, if you if you did it and averaged about 800 of cash flow and then put that aside, we're at a point because of the age factor that we're gonna need that to sure. live on. So it's more like 400. Right. But okay, fine, the property is still ours. Right. We didn't give up anything, we're just we're just living on some of the cash flow. Right. That's gonna replace the income. Right. And so we have mapped it out using your lifestyle model. Yeah. Thing. And we know that it's about 18 to 20 properties. 20 properties. Boom. You know, and it, it, we, we talk, and this is the funny part, right? <laughs> we talk about people having 10, 15, 20, 18 properties, like it's hot cakes. Yeah. Right? I mean, literally it's like buying, you know, buying yeah. donuts. Or, yeah. Or, yeah. You know? <laughs> but, I mean, if you follow that formula, it's right. right, it's yeah. it's simple, yeah. right? And you guys have picked an area which is a nice bread and butter area, not yes. very fancy by any standards, no, it's right? It's a very bread and butter area, and there's plenty of inventory available, good quality inventory available, yes. correct? Yes. So, guys, thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure, our, our and we're excited. Our oh, great thrill. Thank, thank you. you so much. Definitely.